Good morning, everyone, from southern Arizona. I rolled into camp a little bit later last night because yesterday I spent the better part of the day getting RNG ready for adventure. That's my Jeep. Since RNG's been sitting neglected for so long, I had to shuffle my gear around to make sure that I had everything I needed. And also, it took me a little bit to find this campsite. I never know exactly where I'm going when I head out into the fields. I just go and look for a place that inspires me like this. If you've been following Venture Forward for a long time, you might be thinking, ah, it's great to see the Jeep again. And honestly, I feel the same way. I'll admit, I lived in this thing full time for four years. And then when we got the van, I was on and off for a couple years. But I have not been bored by the Jeep because I love this thing but needed a change of scenery as far as vehicles go. So for me, it's been a much needed break to renew my appreciation for it. The Defender, which is almost as capable as far as four wheel drive goes, doesn't have the comfortable sleeping platform that the Jeep has. That's the way I'm keeping the Defender. I'm not building it into an overland vehicle, but I still use the ground tent, which is a little bit of headache to set up and tear down. The van, our Winnebago Revel, while it's extremely comfortable, it's a little bit cumbersome to take into the backcountry. It's a capable four-wheel drive vehicle, but the main challenge I have with the Sprinter is its size and tight trails around trees like these. So this Jeep really strikes an extraordinary balance between four-wheel capability and camping comfort. And I miss that. This works really well. Gotta grind some beans. Promise this won't be a coffee-making montage, just grinding beans. This campsite is superb. It's on a hill, so there's great views all around, and it is so quiet and peaceful. There's enough room for, I would say, about three vehicles, but some leveling is going to be required. The Jeep is on the most level spot in the campsite. Aside from just a little bit of waste left behind in the fire pit, the campsite is very clean. It does seem to be well used, but certainly not midweek in February. I've been here for about 12 hours now and I haven't seen another soul. And check out this view, these mountains up here to the west. My GPS data is available to Patreon subscribers and to paid members of Venture4WD.com. Once you're signed up, you have access to the download section on the website, which is a file structure containing folders full of raw GPX files from all of my videos as far back as 2017. I was serious when I said the Jeep's been neglected, but not neglected in an abused way. It's just been sitting in the driveway a lot while I tend to the other vehicles. It has a few exterior indicator lights out. The turn signals still work, just the marker light is out. Under the hood looks pretty good. The new engine, the replacement Pentastar V6, has only 11,000 miles on it. But a lot of the looms are falling apart and it looks like a rodent has been in there working on things. The most concerning issue with the Jeep right now is the hesitation issue which I've mentioned a number of times before, as far back as two years ago. It doesn't feel like a misfire. In fact, the engine purrs like a kitten. It feels more like 
there's a banana in the exhaust pipe, or a little bit of a transmission slip. And at 209,000 miles on the original transmission, that's a fair theory. And another issue that I've been living with for far too long is the front end. Sounds like the driver's side front, it clicks and pops when it's under load, and I've had it serviced multiple times. It's not the usual suspects, whatever it is. It desperately needs new tires, and as luck would have it, all three of our vehicles needed new tires at the same time. The Jeep could definitely benefit from new springs and new shocks. It's equipped with an AEV 3.5 inch suspension system, and those components have about 120, 130,000 miles on them. The driver's side front spring has a visible arc to it, and the Bilstein 5100 shocks were a little bit weepy there for a while. They seem to have dried up. They do seem to still be working, at least some of them, but it's definitely time for a refresh, and when I get new parts, I'm going to get identical replacement parts. I could not be happier with the performance of the AV springs and those shocks. I do want to revise the electrical system. First of all, the 100 watt solar panel on the roof is kind of beat up, and the exposed wiring is becoming rotten and has also partially detached from the solar panel. Despite its condition, the solar panel does still yield, but probably not for much longer. I'd sort of like to replace the 100 watts with 200 watts because I have the real estate up there. I know I've spent some time just now talking about how the Jeep is ailing, but I don't want to gloss over just how awesome it's been as an adventure vehicle all these years. It has 209,000 miles on it, and for several consecutive years, not a day went by that I didn't take it off pavement and engage four-wheel drive. In Montreal, I slid off a dirt road, went down into a ditch, crashed into a tree, the Jeep flopped onto its side in standing water, and the whole passenger side of the Jeep was submerged in water. Two gentlemen found me in their pickup truck, and they helped upright the Jeep and pull it back up onto the road. And what happened next? I had the side view mirror replaced, I let the interior dry out, and I kept going. That incident did not affect my travels at all. Right now, in February of 2024, the camper itself, the functional camping platform, the interior setup, the cleanliness and the tidiness, it's better than it's ever been in the eight years that I've owned it. So as of right now, I'm going to stop neglecting it once and for all and get it sorted. I have a feeling after the front end and the hesitation issues are solved, it has a long life ahead of it still.
I think I just found a campsite up on a saddle. Let's check it out. Oh, this is nice. This is really nice. Idyllic campsite up on a mountain saddle. And I wouldn't want to be up here during inclement weather. Wind, rain, snow, because there isn't much shelter. But right now, it's beautiful. It's nice and flat. It's airy. I like this better than last night's campsite, although last night was great. Another spectacular campsite. If you want to be able to see all the way west and all the way east, then this is the spot. Although the campsite further down the mountain was a little bit nicer, this is spectacular. Well, RNG still got it. There's a short list of things that I need to see too. Hopefully they won't be too expensive, but we'll get those things fixed and we'll be ready for adventure. I mean, it's ready for adventure now, obviously, but I kind of keep it close to home. I'm gonna call that a wrap because it is Valentine's Day. I'm gonna go home and Shannon and I are gonna enjoy a lovely spaghetti dinner together. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week.